This Raw Vision video is brought to you by Metro Solar, proud partner of the Richmond Football Club. In his very first game, Camden McIntosh burst onto the scene and showed everyone that he's ready to compete with the very best in the big time. Footy is his main focus these days, but he hasn't always had that luxury, juggling sport, work and family life before being drafted to the Tigers. McIntosh, yes! That was big! Camden, tell us about your, your first game, running out on the MCG in front of 80,000 plus people. As soon as I put my jersey on, it was kind of like, yeah, this is for real, I'm going out there. Yeah, I just wanted to take it with both hands and all the boys kind of giving me a pat on the back saying, you'll be right. I remember the game quite well and that whole weekend really because it was my 21st birthday the next day, so. Yeah, way was, to celebrate. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely you know, a long dream I've had for a while. You know, it was a thrill to get out there, run, run in front of, oh, what was it, 90,000 with the family over as well. So it's one I'll definitely remember forever. You came up against Chris Judd. He was an idol of yours growing up. How'd you go crossing paths with one of the best players ever to pull on a football jumper? Oh, well, yeah, I'd grown up playing, well, barracking for Carlton. Um, and obviously, being a WA boy, everyone was like, why do you go for Carlton? So, you know, he was at uh, West Coast beforehand, then he moved to Carlton, and I followed him from day dot. And uh, I was always thinking, lead up to the game, I was like, oh, you know, what if I play on Juddy this weekend? Like, how cool would this be? So, <laughs> yeah, I was pretty humble by it. Um, get out there and, you know, line up on Juddy. Yeah, it was, you know, once in a lifetime for me, sort of thing. Judd works in front, McIntosh, McIntosh, well not daunted, reputations didn't count. All right, so take us back, where did your journey start? Uh, probably started when I was about 15, or 15 years old um, at Pinjarra Tigers there. Moved schools, um, played soccer before that, and I, uh, you know, all my mate, new mates were playing football, and it looked pretty fun. You know, a couple of mates were trying to take hangers on the weekends, I was like, you know, I want to get involved. So I ended up signing up that year and made the grand final. I was lucky enough to play a few Colts games, which is equivalent here to TAC Cup. Yep. Um, as a 16 year old, so I was pretty wrapped about that. What sort of player were you as a, as a kid? I was actually a ruckman growing up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I haven't grown a whole lot from since you know I was 15 years. You're from a massive family. Talk us through who's who's in your family. One of nine. Um, Where do you sit in the nine? I'm the third oldest. Yeah. yeah. My dad lives up north in Karratha. He's got two kids up there with his wife. And Pinjarra is where I live yeah. with my mum. I got Courtney, um, Brooke, myself. Logan, Isabel, Hannah and Georgia, um, all living in the one house. All the girls shared their own room and us two boys got our own bedrooms. Okay, I'm sure there was a bit of rivalry in the, in the oh, house at certain stages. Yeah, there was in the mornings getting ready for school, <laughs> I tell you that, in that bathroom. The girls, there'd be all five of the girls in there brushing their hair and all I want to do is brush you my teeth. You your own mirror time, didn't you? You <laughs> wanted to get in there. What a wonderful goal, the boy from Pinjarra. When I hit the age of about 17, um, my last year of high school, um, my mum got a job on the mines. That was when you know I had to step up as you know the older brother, and I had to help out my younger sisters and help them get ready for school, get their lunches organised. So I was working the three jobs as, uh, as well. So Friday mornings, I'd start at 4am, catch a bus to school. You're a worker. You, yeah. You, you, you've you yeah. had to knuckle down from a from yeah. a young age. Yeah. Have you taken that? to install into what you do here at Tigerland. Waking up at 4am to go to work before school has helped me a hell of a lot to get up in the mornings to start pre-season training, for example. You've got a huge family, as you've just said. How much do you miss them? I miss them a fair bit, constantly on the phone to my dad and my mum. Here we are in the heart of Richmond. Camden's place is just around the corner. Because he's from WA, doesn't get to see his family too much. We've got them here. We're going to surprise him, knock on his door, see what reaction we can get. Hey, how are you, mate? Come out here. How you going? Thanks for having us here. I've got a surprise for you, mate. You go, well, you know how much you love family, mate. You miss your family. Carol, it's always nice to surprise one of your kids, I'm sure. Yeah. Can we get one up on him? How was it, Carol, when Camden had to pack the bags and move over to Melbourne? Excited, but devastated. Yeah. <laughs> Sad, cried at the airport when we dropped him up there. The girls certainly missed him when he moved out. It was like a uh, hole in the house. There was something missing. McIntosh runs onto it, and he is away. The way the club's going as well must, must excite you to know that he's in a pretty good environment. Yeah, no, the club have been great for Cam. Can they win the Premiership this year, the Tigers? They're a chance, totally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carol, you've made the big trek from, from WA, so you've got to go and watch 
Camden play. So there's a couple of tickets. Enjoy. So thank you very much. No worries. A spectacular afternoon for football and a wonderful afternoon if you barrack for the yellow and black.